it's Kayla and welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. Back at you today with iced coffee. By popular demand, today we'll be discussing forecast percentages. What do they mean? And by popular demand, I mean one person suggested it, but hey. If you guys also have suggestions about another Meteorology Monday topic, be sure to leave it down below so I can see it and who knows, maybe next week will be your topic idea. So, forecast percentages. I think everybody has seen on their phone where it says those annoying words, 30% chance of rain, 50% chance of thunderstorms, 75% chance of rain. What do they mean? Why can't somebody just say it's gonna rain or not? And if it says 50% chance of rain and it doesn't rain, does that mean that they're 50% right or 50% wrong? To start us off, let's look at the National Weather Service and see how they define forecast percentages. So our friends over at the National Weather Service actually call this POP, or Probability of Precipitation. And of course, as you all have seen, this POP statement is on the top of every forecast that the National Weather Service puts out. So on top of, you know, your temperature and humidity and dew point forecast for the day, it'll say probability of precipitation, this percentage, or this percentage, or something like that. So let's say, for example, that the probability of precipitation is 40%. What does that 40% mean? Does that mean that it'll rain 40% of the time? Does that mean that it's only going to rain over 40% of the forecast area? Is this something like 40% of the area will get 40% of the rain? Maybe only 40% of the rain from the storm will fall in your specific city? Very vague wording, I have to say that. The exact definition of probability of precipitation is... The probability of precipitation describes the chance of precipitation occurring at any point you select within the forecast area. Now that we do have this 40% chance of rain though, let's look at a little bit of the mathematics to see how these forecasters have arrived at this percentage. All right. Bunker your seatbelts. We're talking about math, which happens to be one of my favorite things in the world, so this might get a little nerdy. Probability of precipitation equals the confidence that it will precipitate somewhere within your forecast area times the percentage of your forecast area that will receive measurable precipitation. So say that you are completely confident that it's absolutely going to rain within your forecast area. Confidence would be 100%. Now, if you're not confident at all, your confidence would be 0%. So let's say that we're very confident that it is going to rain within our forecast area, so we'll set confidence at 100%. Now let's say that we're thinking maybe 40% of the forecast area will receive measurable precipitation. This means that we're going to multiply 1 times 40%. This gives us an overall probability of precipitation of 40%. Let's give another example because I'm a math nerd. Let's say that our confidence this time around is 50% and we'll throw in maybe 80% of our forecast area will receive measurable precipitation. This means that we're going to multiply together 0.5 times 0.8, which gives us a grand total of 40%. So there's another way that we can arrive at that 40% probability of precipitation. So wrapping things all up, 40% chance of rain would mean that there is a 40% chance that any point within your forecast area could receive any type of measurable precipitation. So it's not exactly a guess, as some people might think. When forecasters say that there's a 50% chance of rain, they're not just saying, I don't know, there might be rain, there might not be rain, let's just put a 50% up there. It genuinely has math to back it up. Let's say, that there's an 80% chance of rain. So our probability of precipitation is at 80. This means that our equation, probability of precipitation equals confidence times the area, could mean a few different things. It could mean that the confidence is 100% that at least 70% of the forecast area will be affected. That still leaves out 30% of the forecast area. Let's say our forecast area is the Charlotte region. Say it rains on 70% of Charlotte, but you live in the 30% that didn't get rain. Is this a total bust on the meteorologist's forecast? Not quite. Did it rain in 70% of Charlotte? If it rained in 70% of Charlotte, then the forecast was a success. 
You just happen to live in the 30% that didn't get any. And so on and so forth for all the different type of combinations that could yield a 70% outcome when you multiply together confidence and area. See, meteorologists don't get paid to be wrong all the time. A lot of times we're right. We just can't communicate how we're right because we don't English, we math and science, I'm sorry. Now let's take for example the Greensboro area. Let's say that there's a 20% chance of rain. Again, this means a combination that could yield 20%, maybe 100% uh, confidence that 20% of the forecast area will get rain, or 20% confidence that 100% of the area will get rain. Any type of combination that gives you 20%. Now let's say that it didn't rain at all all. I mean, there's nothing totally missed. The rain's up in Virginia. This would be one of those instances where the meteorologist is completely wrong. Greensboro didn't get any rain. There wasn't 20% chance of anything. A lot of the times you also got to remember that these forecast areas that the National Weather Service offices are forecasting for are huge. Take for example the GSP site, which is based in Greer, South Carolina. Well, Greer, South Carolina is forecasting up here in Salisbury, North Carolina. And they're also forecasting down in South Carolina. And they're also forecasting for Charlotte. So it's a huge forecast area. And they have to be specific about all the individual regions within it. So a great way to learn more about the probability of precipitation in your area and the exact details to your forecast is by looking at the area forecast discussion. This is a product put out by the National Weather Service for the individual forecasting offices that tells you basically in this really long paragraph exactly what's going to happen in your area and why it's going to happen and the fronts and pressure systems behind why that's going to happen and the jets and oscillations behind why that's going to happen probably a bit too technical and a lot of information but if you're interested they do explain all of their terms within the paragraph it's a pretty cool read if you're interested in at least checking it out i will link below our greer forecasting office uh, for the Carolina area down below if you're interested. Hope this was able to clear things up on those pesky little percentages at the top of your forecasts on your weather app. Now when you see the probability of precipitation, you'll go like, Psh, I know exactly what that means. And you can also let your friends know too. You know, when your friends are saying, oh, there was a 70% chance of rain and it didn't rain at my house, but it rained everywhere else. You can be like, whoa, 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 guys. The meteorologists were right. This is what it means. This is why it didn't rain at your house. If you like this topic, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below so that you never miss seeing my face every Monday. As I said in the beginning, definitely comment down below or on our Facebook or Instagram another suggestion for a future Meteorology Monday. I love reading you guys' comments and suggestions and being able to put together videos that answer them. Hopefully. <laughs> if you want to see more weather photos and time-lapse videos and all the fun stuff happening over on our other socials, follow us at MeteorTechWeather on our Facebook and Instagram. We also post a blog on the technology behind meteorology things, and I will link that below as well. Those come out on Thursday for Technology Thursdays. You see, we're really good at this whole same letter thing. Real creative. Until next time, my name's Kayla. Thanks for watching, and happy pop <laughs> That's not funny.